Today, we're going to be canning pork loin chops. So let's do this. Hello, hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to my kitchen. So today we're going to be canning, well cooking, and then jarring up, and then canning and processing seven pounds of pork loin, top loin chops. They're boneless, they're thin cut, they've got great fat on them, beautiful marbled meat. All of it is from Costco. I paid $11 for seven pounds, so let's get started. All right, guys, we have our first layer. Um, these are pork loin chops. They're in my crock pot. We're going to cook them overnight on low. It'll be about eight to nine hours of cooking. We do not need to add any broth. We do not need to add any water. There is plenty of fat. Plenty of grease, plenty of everything in these pork chops to make their own juices. So all we're going to do is layer them and season them as we layer them. And then cook them on low for 7 hours. So, my first layer, we're going to do a sprinkle of pepper. All of this is to taste. Any seasonings you want to use is to taste. It's all your choice. Then I have applewood smoked sea salt. and garlic then I'm going to do another layer and I'm just going to keep rotating layer seasoning layer seasoning layer seasoning and then we'll turn it on low and cook it overnight and then tomorrow we will put it in our jars and process it so I will bring you back when it's all ready to go and be plugged in so you can see what a nice big thick layering and what the crock pot will look like full. Alright guys, there we go. I got them all nice and layered and on top I've got a nice beautiful smothering of honey. And then like I said, I'll put the lid on it, slow roast it overnight on low, 8 to 9 hours. And I will bring you back tomorrow when it's all nice and cooked. It will fall apart. Um, there's no bones in here. So it will all just go straight into um, the jars. I won't have to pick through it or clean it or anything like that. It will be perfect and ready to go. So let's let this cook and we'll be back. So there we have it you guys. It's cooked overnight. Um, I've let it sit for about an hour and cool down a little bit. And now I'm just pulling out all the pork chops. Pork loin chops. And then I'm going to... See they have fat on them. I'm going to be pulling all that off. Cutting it all up. And getting it ready to go into jars. And then I'm also going to take and strain all the juice like um, I did in my one chicken video so that I can use the juice here to put in the jars along with the meat so that it retains its flavor because um, if you can it in water after it's been cooked or even par cooked it just it loses so much flavor so if you can you want to try to can it in the juices that it makes itself so that you help retain a lot of that flavor so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna get all these pulled out I'm gonna cut it all up I'm going to strain this and I'm going to bring you back for the next step. So, we'll be back you guys. Alright guys, here we go. Next step. You fill your jar 
Now all of my jars have been sterilized. I baked them in the oven on 250 degrees for 15 minutes. Then you fill the jar up so it's got an inch of head space or to about the bottom of the rim. And then here I have all that juice from the actual cooking process. I'm just going to fill up the jar. About an inch of head space. Always make sure you debubble. Now, a tip make sure you use wood or plastic when debubbling, never metal, because you could cause um, fractures or chips in your glass jar, and then when it goes through the canning process, it can break. All right, and then in here I have hot water and vinegar to help with cleaning and sterilizing. Clean your rim of your jar and threads if you think they need it because they, if they possibly got any kind of grease on them. <coughs> Here is a great example <coughs> of why you look at and inspect all your jars. You see that? I'll have to redo the jar. I'm just going to use this for now to show you how. I'll have to put this in a different jar but I'm going to show you finish showing you what to do on here because um, this broken and chipped glass here will not can and I clean your lid clean your ring clean your threads I always dip my clean lid washed and cleaned lid in the hot vinegar water put it on put it off to the side and it's ready to be canned now I'm gonna be putting this in a different jar because it's chipped and it's broken and it can't be used um, I should have noticed that um, I had inspected them all before they went into the oven it must have cracked in the oven which means I've got a piece of glass in the bottom of my oven I'm gonna have to go find um, these are the reasons why you want to store them on the shelves with the rings on them or um, I have a video on it how to properly store, um, properly move, um, properly transport your jars. Uh, this one must have gotten chipped at some point because I am very overly cautious so this chip and this break more, I'm not saying it didn't happen in my house but I'm saying more than likely it didn't happen in my house but it broke because I inspected them all before I put them in the oven so there's broken glass in my oven that I'm now gonna have to find but a great experience for you guys to see I don't want to cut out mistakes from my videos this is a mistake I should have inspected them all after they got out of the oven also so lesson learned generally I do but I didn't because I was in a hurry to get the filming of this done so I can get everything jarred and canned up there we go that's the reason why you inspect all your jars before and after any type of process that you do or any steps you do before you do your canning so there we go I'm gonna put it in a different jar finish filling these up and I'll bring you guys back for the next step all right guys here we go in here i have actually a double layer of jars in the top i have the chicken in the bottom i have the pork so this video this clip this part of it will end up being on the end of two videos now if you're canning in pint jars and you have one of these extra tall canners you can do a double layer now it still only requires 75 minutes because these are pints pints of meat are 75 quarts of meat are 90 now being as I am kind of the weirdo that I am um, because I'm doing a double layer I'm gonna do 90 minutes um, I always overdo time whenever I'm pressure canning I always add extra time to pressure canning but when I am doing double layers of meat of pints I always do the full quart 90 minute time it is not necessary it is purely by choice that I do it for that long you can do it for the 75 minutes or you can go like I do go overboard and do it for the full 90 
That is what I do. That is my own personal choice. Again, this is your own personal choice. This is your own personal family. These are your decisions. So, I put them in the canner. I'm going to put the lid on it. I'm going to turn it on high. Um, I'm going to bring the canner up to full pressure. I'm going to make sure I'm lining stuff up here. Um, you want to bring it up to a full vent, which means there's a full stream blowing out of here at full high pressure. The button will pop up. And this button back here, can you see it? No. This button back here will pop up and then you'll get full steam blowing and that is called um, venting. And I will vent for 10 minutes, then we will put the weight on it, let it come up to pressure, 10 pounds. Always, always, always make sure you check your evo elevation levels for your um, area. All you have to do is type it in, um, pressure canning, um, the city you're in, elevation and weight. Where I'm at in the Red River Valley, my um, elevation is 10 pounds. So I always do 10 pounds. So I'm going to bring it up to venting. And then we'll put the uh, thingy on it, the weight on it. And let it come up to pressure. And then we will, once it comes up to pressure, then we will start the timer. And I will process it for 90 minutes. Like I said before, you can do 75 that is all that is required for pints but when i'm doing a double layer i always go overboard i always add extra time i always add extra minutes so i'm going to do the full quart of 90 minutes and that's my choice the choice is yours what you want to do so i have the lid on i have the canner turned on i have it on high it's going to come up to a boil it's going to come up to its vent I will bring you back for that so you can see what actual full vent looks like. So, we'll be back, you guys. All right, there we go, guys. That is full venting. I'm not sure you can see it a little bit, but I'm sure you can hear it. My hand in front shows you a little bit of the... See, there we go. That's full venting. We let it sit and vent for 10 minutes. The back button has popped up, so we definitely know that it is venting. We let it go for a full 10 minutes and then we'll come back and we'll put our weight on it and let it come up to pressure. All right, guys, there we go. It's been venting for 10 minutes, so we're just going to set our weight on top. We're not going to touch it. We're not going to mess with it. We're just going to let it be and it'll start jiggling. And when it gets into a full jiggle, that is processing. And then we'll set our timer for 90 minutes. Like I said before, you actually only need to do 75, but when I have a double layer, I always go overboard. So, we'll be back. Okay, that is processing. Full jiggle, steam coming out, button up, full pressure. So, now that it's up to full processing, we'll let it go. We'll set our timer and we'll process it for 90 minutes. We'll be back, you guys. All right, guys, we have been processing for 90 minutes, so all we're going to do is turn it off and leave it. Don't touch it, don't jiggle it, don't push on the button, don't try to release any of the steam or force it to come down in temperature. The um, coming down phase and the slowing down phase and the button popping down and it coming off of pressure as part of the entire canning process. So we just let it be. As you can see, it's already starting to slow down quite a bit. So we just let it go. We let it be. We turn on our timer and we process for 90 minutes. Well, we, we already processed for 90 minutes. Oh my goodness. We let it cool down after it's 90 minute processing. Um, now, on average, it takes about half to three quarters of the processing time for it to come down, calm down, and come off of pressure. So, we're going to let it be, and we'll be back, you guys. 
there we go you guys it has come down off of pressure it has stopped jiggling the button back here has fallen down so what we're going to do is we're going to take off the weight remove the lid always open away from your face because there will be steam and then we're going to let it sit like this for about five to ten minutes before we start removing our jars so we'll be back you guys there we have it you guys out of the canner and as you can see it's bubbling and boiling that is a good sign that means that you've brought it up to pressure and gotten it all canned properly most of my jars have sealed i'm just waiting for a couple more jars to pop that's normal they don't all seal at once and if a couple of them don't seal then i'll just change the lids and reprocess so there we go you guys we will bring you back when they're all done all cooled and i can show you what they look like as a finished product they look so pretty all right here we go you guys um they sat for 48 hours rested chilled i washed them all off um they do stain sometimes um even with vinegar in the water that happens um, it's meat, it does happen, especially if small amounts of siphoning take place. You want to try to prevent that so food doesn't get underneath, but sometimes siphoning just happens, especially when you over um, process the way I do. It doesn't hurt it to over process, but over processing can lead to a higher chance of siphoning. I don't mind if a jar doesn't seal, I just stick it in my fridge and use it. But I had gotten all 18 jars, and all 18 jars had sealed. I've just used two jars to make salads and sandwich wraps the last 24 hours. So two of my chicken jars are missing. But I did get nine pork and nine chicken. All of them sealed. All of them looked really good. Um, one of my jars was just like this, where it was only half chicken and half um, juice. And then I had um, seven jars um, of nothing but the chicken. And then for the pork, I got seven jars of just the pork and two jars of just the pork broth. Because the pork, um, there was less meat than the pork or than the chicken. There was less meat to put in the jars to begin with than there was of the chicken and the pork made more fat. So... I got just broth, but that's okay with me. I love just broth. Um, there's a reason I did the chicken jars, just half chicken and half broth. Um, because I like to use those for certain kinds of meals. And um, the fat from the chicken broth grease uh, helps fry certain vegetables when I'm making up hot dishes and such. Um, the pork broth, I like to have just the broth in jars because I like to use the jars um, as a meat broth or a water supplement um, when making hot dishes that are flavored with pork. So that instead of adding water, I'm adding pork bone broth that has healthy vitamins and minerals and nutrients in it because that's all basically uh, disintegrated bone marrow at the bottom of this pork broth and that's the stuff you want bone broth so that's why I do the pork that way I like to do the chicken the other way um, when I'm jarring up chicken a couple of jars a half and a half for similar reasons but I like to use the chicken to fry the vegetables rather than as a water substitute so anyways there we go guys that's a lot of information um, these last few clips will be on the videos that go with the chicken and the video that go with the pork. It's going to be separate videos for chicken and pork, but the end couple of end clips will be the same clips because I 
canned them in the same canner because I had my double stack canner that I got for Christmas from my parents. So, there we go guys. Thanks for coming along. I hope I answered all your questions. Some people asked me to get a little bit more in depth with why I do things, why I can them the way I do, why I do the separating of them the way I do and what I like to use them in. So I hope I answered questions for everyone. I hope you liked my video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. It helps my channel grow, helps show other people that they want to see my videos, helps show other people that I answered your questions. So, we'll see you all in the next one. And remember, stay positive. Bye!